This is a smartphone and today I will be attempting to charge it using gravity. Now when we talk about gravity and electricity, gravitricity, gravity batteries are what makes this possible. As you may have known from my previous video, a gravity battery is a type of mechanical energy storage technology that stores energy in the form of gravitational potential energy. By using the force of gravity to raise and lower heavy loads, thus converting electrical energy into gravitational potential energy while charging and vice versa when discharging. As since our gravity battery can output about 4 volts of electricity and basically power back batteries output is about 3.7 volts nominal voltage. So I was thinking, what if I connect a charging module in one of these power banks to this gravity battery and charge the phone with it? And also, most of you voted for me to optimize this gravity battery, which is what I'm doing. While my idea for charging your phone using a gravity battery sounded pretty easy in theory, it had one problem, which was that this gravity battery only worked for 16 seconds. Are you kidding me? That's it! Wait. Yeah, that's literally insignificant when it comes to phone charging. I mean, no phone charges is only a single percentage in 16 seconds. Specification 150 watt. This thing is going to get your phone to 50% in five minutes. Well, except for this one, which is pretty ridiculous. And anyway, we want to work with a phone that has a typical charging time with most phones. So to make this gravity battery more efficient, we have to find a way to make it work for longer, for at least 10 minutes. Yeah, that's a 60 times upgrade. We've talked about ways to improve this gravity battery in my other video which included improving the gearing shaft to ratio on the motor shaft, increasing the drop depths using mines and using transformers. While the use of transformers does not increase the runtime, it only improves electricity being produced. So we left with these two options, and of these, increasing the drop depth seemed easier to pull off. I mean, I could just drop it from this three-story building. So yeah, that's what I we're doing. Let's do it. Now I have increased the diameter of the pulley to accommodate more ropes due to the increased height. And also, like I stated earlier, I will be dropping the load from the terrace of this two-story building, which is about 9 to 10 meters standard height. And from my calculation, that should give us about 4.8 to 5.6 minutes of runtime, which might be enough to charge our phone. So let's find out. So the whole setup is complete now. You can see my phone connected to this charging module, which will hopefully charge the phone when the load starts falling from this height, which is pretty high. My phone is not fucking charging. No charging. Nah, it's not charging. Not charging. Check it. Yes. As you could see, it was unable to charge this phone even after increasing the height which I dropped the load for, making it work for longer. Now the reasons for this are 1. Voltage was too high and 2. The current was too low. Even though I had my module which did the job of stepping down the voltage to the required one, the current was still too low and as you know, phones charge using electrical currents, not voltages which is why your power banks have higher currents compared to their voltages. Now you might be thinking, 
don't hand crank generators charge your phone and isn't this setup basically a hand crank generator? Well, the answer to those questions are yes. But you see, even these hand crank generators do not charge every phone, as you can see here. Green light step, you can see the battery icon is indicating a charger is connected. When I start spinning the lever, a lightning icon will appear on the battery. It means uh, it is somewhat charging, but there isn't enough current. And finally, iPad. not charging as well as I had expected. Well, the reason is the current. If you pick up any iPhone or any smartphone charger, you will see the output from the charger will be 5 volts and 1 ampere current. That means it requires 5 volts and 1 amp of steady current to charge properly. This charger is putting out 5 volts and a maximum of 600 milliamp. That's 400 milliamps below the required current. That is why it is charging the smaller phones but not the bigger ones. Even the big tablet which is showing it is charging, it is most probably just ruining the battery. This does not go to say that it is impossible to charge any phone with it. It's just impractical. Because you may need a lot of components to get it to work. Anyway, I know this was really disappointing for you all because it didn't charge the phone. It was also disappointing for me too. My phone is not fucking charged. No charge. No. Let me hold, let me hold. Nah, it's not charging. It's not charging, okay. But hey, failures are part of success, right? Also, I still think I have one thing in mind to hopefully make this work. If you want to see me make another video where this actually works, get this video to a thousand like, and I'll drop that video. Until then, be creative, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, did you notice how long this worked for? See if you can find out in this video. Seven seconds? What the hell? Anyway, let's see that again, shall we? But we'll fix it in the next video, so make sure you go subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.